Hey guys, it's Melanie. I'm at Coast Redwood Middle School again today. It's Thursday, April 23rd. I hope you guys are all doing good and sheltering in place and staying healthy. I wanted to show you your garden today and I'm starting with this calendula here. It's growing really well. And I wanted to say that, you know, normally if you wanted this plant to grow more flowers, you would come in and deadhead them. And that's really just kind of picking off the dead flowers. And I would usually normally use my scissors here. But I actually wanna let this one go to seed a little bit so that we can have some seed for next year. And it might be a little early to be doing that. So I'm just gonna take off some of these dead heads because we'll get seed from all these flowers here at the end of the summer. So I'm just gonna cut off oops, a few more dead heads here so that the plant can grow a little more. Okay, uh, here's our fennel. Our fennel is starting to flower out. It's growing really, really well despite the quail chewing on it like, like they are here. But it's, it's still growing. The quail's getting the stuff at the bottom and it still keeps going on. There's your mint. It's a little bit taller this week, right? Tiny bit. I watered today really thoroughly. I checked all the drip. There's your sorrel and your Johnny Jump Ups or your violets or violas, whatever you want to call them. I also took that black rubber and all that metal stuff that was put on this bed and clean that off. And look at your roses and strawberries. Look, they're tr starting to turn red there. You have a whole bunch of strawberries around your strawberry bucket. Look at all those growing. Oh, a couple that didn't make it. So we'll pull those ones out. And this one's going to make it. It's just got some dead stuff on it. This one too. There's some more strawberries in there. Great little strawberry barrel. And over here, our chamomile and our thyme and some garlic, some garlic, garlic. And there's a thyme hiding back there, right there. And oregano. And your carrot. Look at, it's still blooming, this one flower. And it's starting to bloom out. All the beneficial pollinator bugs will love this when it starts flowering. Look how big that plant gets. It's like bigger than my arm, my forearm. Our echinacea is growing back. Oh, and I wanted to show you right behind this carrot, I found some nasturtiums growing. So we've got some there. Some nasturtiums here and our echinacea and some garlic around that. They're still kind of small. They're getting bigger, a little bit bigger in this bin. The other thing I did today, other than watering, was I uh, added some straw mulch to most of the beds so that we could retain some more water now that it's, it's getting hotter out here. Uh, this is your elephant garlic. It's got another garlic mingled in here, but that this big one right here with this flower on top is a elephant garlic. 
See how much bigger they get than the regular garlic? And I'm gonna cut that flower off. I'm gonna cut, cut that flower off because I don't want this garlic to go to flower. These are scapes, they're called. Some people really love to eat them. But I'm just gonna cut that off right there. So it can focus on the bulb coming the next couple of months because we'll probably harvest these in June, maybe, maybe July. We'll see how big they get. So that's when we harvest garlic. So we want to make sure that garlic doesn't flower so it just focuses on its, on its root systems. You can see the puppies in the background, your roses. And I also wanted to show you your fava beans. They are still ginormous, huge. And I actually cleaned up this row right here so that uh, we could walk through it and harvest some more beans. And uh, as fava beans grow, they kind of tend to fall over because they get top heavy and you know, their stems, I'll show you their stems, are very hollow. Here they are right here. There's the stems, and they're hollow, so they often will bend over like this as they get top heavy and break, but they don't stop growing. So I took and uh, I guess pruned your fava beans, and uh, there's the pile right there. And just from those prunings, just from cleaning up your fava beans here, just from those prunings, I got a half a grocery bag full of fava beans and now I have escape and I picked some of the little ones too because I learned um, also last week that some people eat the smaller beans um, whole the whole bean so I decided to keep keep what I could off this this pile of trimmings and that included some smaller beans um, but these ones are as big as my thumb and I'll save these for seed for next year. Here's some smaller beans. So I'm gonna try these, uh, cook these beans just like this and try that and see what that tastes like. So I cleaned up one side and I sort of cleaned up the other side of your fava patch, but you can see that the fava beans are, are on this side are kind of falling out too. So they're leaning over because they're getting top heavy. Okay. There's another rose. Everything bloomed in a week. It was amazing. They smell really good. Your garden smells delicious. We've got our rosemary, some daffodils, uh, and an iris, and a little lavender there. And then another patch of garlic. And look at how big that's growing. It's growing really big. We're gonna have a lot of garlic this year, you guys. Um, I put drip on your trees like I said I would now that they're ready to transfer um, so those should be good and when I didn't show you your raspberries down here here's your raspberries they are growing really big and I this is one of the ones I put straw around because they're in these um, fabric pots which need a lot more water so I added some mulch there to keep them a little bit more wet when throughout the week. And here's your second planting of fava beans here. Uh, let's see. Oh, they are starting. Here's some a bean here, another one here. So we've got some beans, but none of these were big enough to harvest and they're doing really well and you can see here some top heavy ones falling over right there and your lemon verbena or your lemon verbena however you want to say it is growing back it's not only growing back from these stems that we pruned back in the fall but it's also growing at the very bottom of this bush so you could actually cut this bush back all the way to the ground and know that it's going to grow back there. And lemon verbena is one of my favorite simple syrups to make. I love lemon verbena. 
so yummy or lemon verbena and here look at i found a an iris that you guys planted that's still blooming so that's wonderful and your raspberry patch is going crazy so we have tons more raspberries to transplant well i hope you guys are doing good i hope that um all is well with you guys and i hope that i get to see you soon and i would love it if you guys commented below or sent me an email to let me know what you would like to grow in the garden some things that we can plant right now um are beans and chard and kale and spinach um, can all be planted right now um, and then in may we'll probably plant some some squashes some winter squashes and summer squashes and maybe some corn or tomatoes in may um, so check out that form, that Santa Cruz vegetable growing guide that was sent out to you guys by Rhonda. I'll put a little link on this video too that you can see and see what you can grow in the month of April and uh, May because we're quickly coming on May. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing good and don't forget to be kind. You know, that's my number one rule and I hope you guys are being kind at home to all your family members. Um, I miss you guys a lot and I hope to hear from you. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.